So this is our D3 defibrillators. You'll find these in Allen Bray unit, theatres and SAPU. So I'm just going to go through some of the functions of the defib. So to turn it on for patient monitoring, we'd go to monitor setup. Here we can use um, the ECG monitoring and you can calculate respiratory rate, heart rate and you can put a SATS monitor on. If we were to put it into AED, we turn it around to AED. It says to apply pads. We would collect the pads from the side of the defib. We would undo this connector. Apply pads. And then we would connect the pads via this link here. Analyzing now. Do not touch patient. Shock advised. Charging. Do not touch See, patient. See, AED automatically Press charges. We would make sure the area was safe, oxygen away, and then we would press the flashing light shock button. Shock delivered. Paused. If needed, begin CPR. We would then follow the machine and we do what it says. You can see here, this is a transpedance calculator. At the moment it's green. If it's showing green, it means that the pads are firmly onto the patient Breathe. and they will be delivering a good and thorough shock of 200 joules, which is Breathe. the first escalation. If the light is showing yellow, this means that there is transpedance and it means that there is something affecting the connectivity of the pad. Therefore, this might be that the patient is wet or hairy, there's a shaver in the bottom of the crush trolley. If it's Breathe. red, it means that the pads are probably not attached and it will not deliver a shock. It shows you here how Breathe. many shocks you've given and it shows you here the escalation of the energy. If we come to cardiac arrest and it is an advanced life support provider and the crash team, they will be putting the AED into manual mode. To do this, we move the arrow on the side round to manual defib. CPR is ongoing and we inform the team lead that the pads are on and the monitor's on. They will then assess the rhythm that they see here. Again, we've got our transpedience calculator and it also has a start time of two minutes. As soon as I either press this grey button or I deliver a shock, the two minutes will begin. Our first juice is 200 and it automatically escalates up, so we do not need to manually escalate the energy unless it's in paediatric mode. This also will tell us how many shocks we've given. If I was to charge the defibrillator on this occasion, I would press charge. If, because for whatever reason it is an unsafe shock or environment, I can press this disarm button to remove the charge. If I want to change the energy, I can press the up and down keys, as you can see. But as I said, it will automatically escalate. Shocking is still the same, press the flashing button. Now, if I wanted to cardiovert a patient, then I need to put this into sync for any sort of tachyarrhythmia that we need to treat by cardioversion. I would still put it into manual defib and I would dial down the energy to 100. Then I would press enter sync. Are you sure you want to enter sync? I would press confirm. Now I know that the defib is in sync because I can see the white buttons here that are in the, on the um, R wave. I will just change the rhythm. I can now see the, the waves and the white marks are on the R wave. I can also see here that it's flashing green for sync, so I know that we're in the sync option. Now I need to remove oxygen as you would in a crash and charge. We start at a lower joulage for synchronised cardioversion. Everyone away, oxygen away, and I would shock and I would hold the button down for an extra two seconds. One, two. That's so that we are delivering the shock on the R wave. As you can see from the monitor, we are still in sync. So if we wanted to take it out of sync, for whatever reason, we would press exit sync. As you can see now, the white dots have gone and we are not flashing in sync anymore. So that's for cardioversion. If we wanted 
to put the monitor into pacer. So if we are treating a bradycardia and we need to transcutaneous pace a patient, then we would put the ECG dots on and the defib pads as we would for cardioversion, and then we would put it into pacer. This is a screen that will first come up. Here we will see the underlying rhythm that the patient's in. So we would make sure that our ECG dots are on our patient. We would then think about transcutaneous venous pacing for the patient. I'm just going to put my ECG dots on the patient and see what rhythm they're in. So here I can see pacing spikes. The pacing rate is set at 70 and the output is automatically set at 60. So this patient is automatically being paced at 60 beats per minute. However, we need to make sure we see a pacing spike before every QRS complex. And at the moment, we are not achieving that. Therefore, I need to up the output. I push the cursor in and I dial up by 10. And I'm what I stop when I see a pacing spike before every QRS. Here I can already see that pacing spike is following a QRS. Now I'm happy with capture, I would dial up 5 to 10 to cover basis should the patient move or anything like that. Then I would check my output, so here we're dialing up to 70, I would check a pulse and make sure we're dialing at 70. This can now, is now con constantly pacing the patient. I would put out my call to the cardiologist. When the cardiologist comes and he, they want to see what the underlying rate of the patient is, I would press this four to one ratio button and I would hold it down. This will show you a four to one ratio with pacing spike so that the, we can see what the underlying rhythm was for the patient without having to take them off the pacer. As soon as I let go, automatically the pacing goes back in and now we can safely transfer the patient out of the department if need be.